Hello there viewers, you are back with the Madcap Gamer and today I've got a different video for you. We are going to have a versus match between Warhammer 9th Edition and Bolt Action 2nd Edition. Which one should you buy and why? What are the main differences? We're going to find out. Now Warhammer 9th Edition 40k has dropped. Everyone seems to be playing or reviewing the game. So I thought I would get involved but with all the hype I thought I would make a video that is a little bit different and that is why I've decided to pit this tabletop game against a similar tabletop game and see which one comes out on top. So today we are doing Warhammer 40,000 9th edition versus Bolt Action 2nd edition. First of all, I better quickly describe for anyone who is a little bit confused what these two games are. Warhammer 40k 9th edition is a futuristic sci-fi tabletop battle game, kind of like a board game but without rails where you roll dice and move units and tanks and spaceships and aliens around shooting at each other, rolling dice and otherwise tabling your opponents and winning the day. Bolt action on the other hand is very similar in that you have units and tanks uh, moving around the battlefield, shooting and charging at each other in order to win, but they are set in the very realistic world of World War II combat. So instead of aliens and lasers and, and robots trying to kill each other, we've got the nations that were involved in World War II, everyone from Great Britain to the US to Germany to Russia, all your favorites. If you've never played strategy games like this before, they're basically like chess, but without the grids and a lot more complicated. But enough of the introductions, let's get down to it. Warhammer 9th Edition versus Bolt Action 2nd Edition. Interjection. Just before I go on, I forgot to say in the original recording of the video, but despite the reviews that you are going to see and despite the opinions expressed in this video, the answer to which one I will be playing and which one I'll be investing in is, of course, both games. Because... Warhammer 40k and bolt action. So do take that into consideration before you slam that hate button on this video. It is for people that are looking for a change and are wondering if they've been playing 40k for a long time, whether diving into 9th edition and investing in that is the way to go, or changing game styles altogether into something like bolt action. Or if you are a tabletop or board gamer that has been trying to move into war games and you're not sure and you're not too fussed on which war game, you just want to know which one will be easier and friendlier for your friend group to get into, that's what this video is for. But for me personally, I'm definitely going to be playing both anyway. Interjection over. Back to the video. So ding ding ding, round one, and we better get this one out of the way pretty quickly. It is of course the price. Now, Everyone is aware that plays Games Workshop games, be it Age of Sigma or Warhammer 40k, that you are paying a premium for the models that you are getting. But it wasn't until I decided to buy into a game like Bolt Action that I really discovered the gulf between the price points in these two games. In Bolt Action, you can get a unit of infantry just like this one. This one's a Warfare SS for about $55 Australian. Now inside this box set, there is about 30 models. Now if you haven't played Warhammer 40k before, then that doesn't mean that much to you, but if you have played 40k before, that number should be ringing in your ears pretty solidly. $55 for 30 models, in case you're wondering, there is about 30 models on the table here in front of me. Warhammer 40k from Games Workshop, $55 will get you five models, um, sometimes less, maybe. Depending on your army, you can get up to 10 models for that, but never 30. And anyone that's played Bolt Action or 40k before uh, can tell you that 30 models is often all the infantry that you'll see on the battlefield during a game. So $55 to get your whole army's worth of infantry sorted in one buy is pretty impressive. Now that's not the only way to go, you can get army starter sets which will give you about 30 infantry, a tank and then a bunch of support like mortars, machine guns and things like that comes to about 40, 50 models. Um, that will set you back 140 Australian dollars to get your starting army sorted out and ready to go for bolt action. In contrast, if you wanted a similar starter army of about 40 odd models in Warhammer 40k, there's a Space Marine one out at the moment which will set you back, and this is not a typo, 952 dollars. 
$952. The same amount of models as 140 Now, that's not anything painted. That's not any rules. That's nothing. Those are just raw models. 950 140 Now, to give you a different example, for less than half of that $952, which is one starter army for Space Marines, I was able to get three of these infantry box sets, some Germans and some British. I was able to get about four or five tanks. I was able to get the core rule book, the army books, two German and one British. I was able to get all the paints, all the dice, all the counters that I need to actually have two painted setup armies to play against each other for less than half the price of one unpainted army in a box of 40k. That is not just me griping about the price of Games Workshop. If you wanted to start out a game and get people that you know involved, it is a lot easier to get your friends interested in a game where you can show them painted models and a spare army that they can just jump in and start using so that you can teach them the ropes. Which makes it a lot easier to set up and get started. The last 40k army that I decided to uh, create from scratch took me a lot of purchasing time over the space of about a year to get a good 1200 point army sort of started and I've still been adding to that for a second year to get up to the 2000 point mark. Now, by contrast, in about two months to six months, um, I have two uh, 1000 to 1500 point armies for bolt action ready to go. So price point, ding, 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 round one goes to bolt action. Round two time, and this time we are going to go with complexity. Now, when 9th edition was announced and we knew that the rules were coming, all of us waited with bated breath. What were they fixing? Why were they changing the rules? How was the game going to become better? Were they going to make it faster, easier to learn, more accessible? And the answer was none of those things. I kid you not, none of those things. They fixed Overwatch, which made it uh, so that you couldn't shoot at everyone that was charging and was something that really bogged down the game. But everything else that bogged down the game is still there and more. I'm talking about 40k here, a game that's so understood to be bogged down with rules that tournaments of 40k never seem to get past turn two or three. And most friendly games that you have don't really get much past turn four or five maybe in a game that was technically designed to go for six turns. Something wrong here. And we know what it is. For every roll in 40k there is a re-roll. It is ridiculous and frustrating to watch sometimes. You will roll to hit and then you will re-roll ones to hit and then you'll roll to wounds and then there's someone there that gives you a re-roll to wounds. So you re-roll those and then the person you're shooting at gets a roll to save, but then of course they get disgusting and resilient rolls to save again. There's been six or seven rolls to sort out one round of shooting. It's insane. Then there's stratagem farming, of course, and you're collecting these command points that you need and you're rolling to get more command points and nonsense like that. You've got command point re-rolls, which not only takes some time because you're stopping and thinking about whether you're going to spend this re-roll, but it's also ruining the cinematic nature of the game. Oh, that tank exploded because we got a lucky shot and well I'm gonna command point reroll that so it doesn't explode and oh this happens but now I'm gonna command point reroll it so it doesn't happen it totally takes time out of the game and ruins the randomness of it at the same time next there is just the bane of my existence which is the victory point counting now like when I first started back in fifth sixth Maybe it was. A lot of the scenarios in Warhammer 40k were capture the objective and hold it. King of the hill, or just kill your opponent, or control corners of the board. And now it seems that every single game, and I've watched many games of 9th edition, so this is the new set, not 9th edition, um, they have victory points for objectives which you can count only from the second turn in the command phase you will get three points for every victory point you control there might be six on the board then you get another five points if you control more victory points than your opponent then you get to pick three secondary objectives all of which have a maximum value of 15 like assassinate warlords or blow up vehicles or things like that and for each one of those you get a certain amount of victory points and you count those up and calculate and tabulate them every single turn as you go towards the game and one player is is working on 67 points at the end of turn three and then the other player is trailing them on 58 and you need 
a degree in calculus to make sure that you haven't stuffed anything up and a lot of the YouTube uh, videos that are out there you'll see battle reports from professionals where they forgot to count those points there or they like neglect it's too complicated make it king of the hill or something like ob objectives area control like it used to be. Bolt Action by contrast is not a simple game it's not for the under 10s okay it's plenty of complexity there but there are no rerolls. You shoot at something with 10 dice, you miss with half of them, and you move on. None of that reroll shenanigans. The weapons in bolt action are standardized. A rifle for the British works the same as a rifle for the Germans. A howitzer for the British works the same as a howitzer for the Russians, okay? So there's a lot of that standardization throughout. You can get your head around your rules and your opponent's rules a little bit easier. Something that they used to do in 40k, like Warhammer Fantasy Battle was even better at it. Like if you were a dwarf or an elf or a chaos, for a chaos warrior a crossbow was a crossbow a javelin was a javelin a longbow was a longbow everything was standardized and it was a lot easier to wrap your head around what you were looking at on the board in bolt action there is little to no victory point counting you have so many victory points on the table objectives whatever they are and you take them and hold them for the end of the game and whoever holds them at the end wins um, there's area control there's wipe out your opponent but there's not a lot of collect this many points every turn and write them down on a sheet of paper which you need to keep somewhere near by nonsense. There are some rules which are just common sense. Small arms like pistols and rifles cannot damage things like tanks, so just don't bother shooting at the tanks. You find something else to shoot at. 40k used to do this, but then they changed that so that tanks had wounds now, and you had to also count up wounds and bracket damage, and anything from a tiny pistol could get a lucky shot and wound a vehicle. But they still couldn't like auto damage and blow up a vehicle, which was cool and cinematic if that one dude with the bazooka managed to get a lucky shot on turn one and boom, that tank blows up. Now they've all got 30 or 40 wounds and you have to keep another running tally of how many wounds are left. So there are more complicated rules in bolt action, like a howitzer explosion does one thing when you fire it in the open field and it does another thing in the building but those are very specific to making the game more realistic um, and making it more cinematic also if you don't like those super complicated rules just don't bring the howitzer the games are faster they are easier to explain more often than not you will get to turn six and sometimes you will even want to go for longer Hands down, complexity-wise, round two goes to Bolt Action 2nd Edition. Round three goes to Excitement. Now, surely this is where Warhammer 40k shines. Aliens, emperors, gods, demons, fighting it out across the galaxy with tanks and lasers and ships and aircraft has to be more exciting than history class on the tabletop, surely. Well... I would have thought that too when I first started playing and I was so very wrong. It was actually the excitement of watching a bolt action game that drew me to it and drew me in from the sidelines. I saw my first bunch of bolt action uh, games happening at a games day where I was playing 40k and Age of Sigma and didn't really give it much attention. I just looking at the models and the buildings and how meticulously everything was painted and put together, I just assumed that it was an old sort of fuddy-duddy game with lots of complicated rules that moved at a snail's pace for realism purposes or something like that. It wasn't until the second time that I went to a games day and watched a game of bolt action that I could not stop and I like lost an hour um, just staring at these players. It goes a little something like this. In Warhammer 40k, one player one has a turn, and he does everything from moving, shooting, charging, psychic powers, all sorts of random stuff. And then after all that is done, it is the other player's turn. Now, we have already discussed the complexity of the game, and sometimes that one turn can take 45 minutes or an hour to get one player to get everything they need completely done so the other player can get a turn. You're either engrossed in your own mountain of re-rolls and stratagems and things that you need to remember with your own rule, or you're sitting on your side of the table patiently waiting for it to get to your turn again as the minutes and hours tick by. Age of Sigma, the Games Workshop Fantasy game, changes this up a little bit with a random turn element, which I think is great for the game. Um, one Player 1 has a turn, Player 2 has a turn, and then they roll off and see who gets the next turn after that. So 
player two might get a double turn and things like that. When they actually announced the rules were coming out for 9th edition 40k, that changing turns was such an exciting element of Age of Sigmar, I thought, surely, surely this is going to be a Warhammer thing now and this is going to be awesome. Um, no. They have stuck with the everything player one's turn and everything player two's turn, which you might think is the way that a turn-based sort of board game thing works anyway, so how is it any different in bolt action? Well, just you wait. This was the one thing that riveted me to the spot while watching a game of bolt action. It does work differently. In bolt action, each army is represented by certain coloured dice and each unit gets its own die and all those dice go into a bag like this one. Once the game has started, it is simply turn one and the players reach into a bag and pull out a dice. This one is a German dice that goes with a squad, any squad that that player decides to use, and that squad's activated. They move, they shoot, they charge or whatever, and then they reach into the bag when they are done with that squad, they pull out another dice. It's a British dice. Now, the British squad gets to move and shoot and do all that sort of stuff. Then they go into the bag and pull out another one. It's another British dice. And that randomness goes on for the entirety of the turn. One player sees that a unit is in trouble and they need to do something to get them out of there or to get another unit into support. And they look at that bag waiting for their dice to come out. Are they going to get that dice? And then they'll be able to save that unit. Or is the other team going to get yet another dice and they're going to absolutely wipe the floor with you? There is so much strategy in just that simple element of moving the turn forward that it makes up for all of the stratagems and all of the bonuses and all of the warlord bubbles and things that are famous in 40k just for the simple fact that you don't know exactly who is going to go next and your armies are basically moving in real time as your opponent moves you get to move and it's all intertwined together there's so many layers of strategy to it i've seen players that can have a lucky turn and really steamroll their opponents only to find that in the next few turns the opponent gets most of the dice early and gets to claw some of that battle back. Other players I've watched cross their fingers and hope that they don't get any of their dice pulled so that they can see where their opponent goes and what they're going to do before they get a chance to react. A simple element that keeps the game exciting from start to finish. Every single turn works out a little bit different and there is always a bit of tension waiting to see if you are the one that gets the next action on the turn. So sorry to say, unpopular opinion maybe, but for excitement, round three also goes to bolt action. Round four and the last one for this video is going to go with deployment. Now this might seem like a minor thing, but once I saw a few games of bolt action and read the rules and started playing my first games of bolt action, it was just such an obvious thing that it irritated me that it hadn't been resolved in something like 40k that is such an iconic game. In 40k, there are two deployment zones. Each player sets up in their deployment zone, usually one unit at a time, back and forth and back and forth, adding this whole extra time-consuming element to the game where you deploy and then try and counter-deploy. And It's a very important element of the game, don't get me wrong. Games are won and lost with deployment, but it's not the most exciting portion of a game. After the deployment is done, then the players roll off and the game begins. So there's a whole sort of pre-game thing that goes on. Not only that, but you need space for this deployment. There's usually about 24 inches separating the armies in the middle, six inches deployment zone for each side on the sides or the corners. It can change around a lot, but you have to have this set area which has enough room for your models to fit on the board, which if you've gone a little bit terrain heavy can be a right pain. Bolt action, by contrast, um, doesn't. I mean, there are certain scenarios in bolt action where one player is the defender and they set up gear and the other player attacks and comes onto the board. But generally speaking, the simpler versions of the game, um, there isn't a deployment zone. Um, you have an empty table with all the terrain on it and all the armies are off to the side, wherever you want to put them on a shelf or whatever. And turn one, you reach for the bag. You pull out whatever squad is going to get a turn, the British ones, and they come in from their side of the board. Instead of having a deployment zone where they're already set up, they just 
walk in from the edge of the board, they're six inches, they're 12 inches, whatever it's going to be. That might seem like it doesn't really affect the game all that much, but it does two very important things. One, the deployment phase is non-existent. So the game starts in turn one, where players are moving onto the board and they can shoot. And you can also see where your opponent is or is going and move your troops onto the field accordingly. The game has started straight away. It takes away that pre-game back and forth shenanigans where the game hasn't actually started yet proper, but it's still the I don't know. The action starts straight away is what I'm getting at. The other big thing that it does is because there are no deployment zones six inches on the board this side or 12 inches on the board and 24 inches separating in the middle, you actually end up with more space on the board than you thought you would have. Um, this desert board that you can see in front of me right now is a four foot by four foot tabletop. Now, normally in 40K, I don't go any anything less than a six foot by four foot because you need all that space that you can to spread out your forces because those deployment zones are awfully skinny and you're gonna have room to put everything on the board. Here, I have played everything from 250 points to 1,200 point armies for each side and I have not yet had a space issue because instead of having that six inches already gone before the games even started you start way back here on the edge and you've got more room to move and maneuver because you never lost that deployment zone space. Meaning ultimately that your games start quicker and your game boards can be smaller. You can use smaller tables. You can be a bit more flexible. You don't need a huge amount of space, which means of course, unsurprisingly that in round four deployment, Bolt Action wins again. So that might seem a bit brutal, four rounds out of four going to bolt action. That is just my humble and probably unpopular opinion, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. There's plenty more that I can say about both of these games, and I would like to, of course, get a few example games up on the YouTube channel very soon. Fortunately for me, um, in the last six months, I have trained three of my friends to play bolt action, exactly how I explained before, because it's so much cheaper to get two different armies and paint them up cheaper than you would get 40k and explain them to people. The rules are demonstrably easier because what took a friend of mine several, several attempts at playing a game to get his head around to 40k, played a game of Bolt Action and then immediately set up again and played another game. My fiance, who definitely, definitely quit playing uh, Warhammer 40k because she didn't like it anymore, it was too complicated, um, has played eight, nine games of Bolt Action against me now and has won all of them. Um, so no complaints from her end, at least. So anyway, I hope to get some videos of Bolt Action up there for you guys to see what it is I'm talking about. If you're interested in more opinions and comparisons between it and 40k, please let me know. Or let me know if you'd like to see me experiment in the Man Camp Gamer Laboratory with my own homunculus of a game called Bolt Hammer. The mix of all the easiest, most realistic and fun rules from Bolt Action and Warhammer crammed together into one easy, breezy, space marine -y sort of blowing up 40k version of the game. If you agree with the video and you are an avid Bolt Action fan, do let me know. If you completely disagree and you are all about the 40k, please let me know also. If you like the video anyway, whichever way you lean, give it a like, give it a subscribe, and stick around for more videos in the future. This is the Mad Cat Gamer. Keep gaming.